de ba ye kene ni mono no bose nketa ai si na ya de ndi bona ma ta di ko si de um ya bo ibo media ka isi wene o tero ni ya bo nu ko zi di o kempa eh basta ma ka ni ibo and ibo community and ye de bena nigeria ya bi fika ina o tero na ibo media eh di ko isi we de so la yo bona nka bo o bose zigi ina bi na ni lo akwo na ibo media eka baro ka e subscribe bo and turn on your notification ke la pe miss any of our update di ka ni ti pe ni ba popo wa mbe kwa mbe e di ko si de o wuri ya wete do no bo sin keta bo stamaka ka ya bi face ada and bo stamaka ka ya bi face abato na ni igbo e bi ko ma cho ki ge ya bi fe ya bo bi from prime minister ma zi samon e pa o wo di foku ni ro kwọ ma choko nge onu ge se bi fe ona drop ora ifu nche ni ro awọ ba samaki yenda ni no wu right over to you sir by it so what is the rationale when the state ratifies one of the international human rights treaty it assumes a legal obligation to implement the right recognized in that treaty do you understand the word when a state ratifies, like Nigeria ratifies this law, Nigeria, if it's supposed to be a country under international human rights treaty, Nigeria assumes legal obligation, obligation, obliged to implement the rights recognized in that treaty. And what are these rights? Do not commit the crime of kidnapping people do not commit the crime of arbitrary detaining people do not commit the crime of torturing people do not commit the crime of depriving people their liberty nigeria have committed all this crime against the biafra people especially mazin and the and they are still standing on this crime that if heaven is going to fall let it fall that's where we are today we are still settling the matter now through ratification states undertake to put in place domestic measures and legislation compatible with their treaty obligation the state also commit to submitting regular report on how the rights are being implemented to the monitoring committee set up under the treaty now how can Nigeria now submit a report on how they are implementing this right, which they signed into by arbitrarily detaining Mazin and they can detaining thousands of Biafrans illegally? So they are going to write a report that, oh, you know, Biafrans are agitating, so we catch them, we kidnap some of them, we put them, we distribute them to different parts of northern Nigeria, and they are not going to court. As a matter of fact, we have thousands of Biafrans inside the prison, and there is no trial, and are, some of them have been there for 20 years. And they will write, is that the report they are going to write to the United Nations? In accordance with the treaty Nigeria signed? The answer is no. They never even, they can't even write a report, not to talk of writing what they are doing. So Biafra is coming to ratify these particular treaties and profess solution and alternative to Nigeria. That's what we're doing. To make sure we safeguard the life of our people and no sane human being can have a contrary opinion or go against Biafra becoming a nation in order to restore peace and stability in the entire Sahel region by following this particular rules and regulation of the international law. So you see. The reason we are sacrificing everything, taking the risk we are taking is for humanity. So everybody can at least enjoy some level of peace. Now, this particular concept of the international treaties mandates the state to commit to also commit to submitting regular report on how the rights are being implemented 
to the monitoring committee set up under the treaty. Who are this committee? The, uh, the working group is part of the committee set up by this particular treaty. The committee that have mandated Nigeria to release Mazen Ambikano, not only Mazen Ambikano, but his own case is more of, you know, gaining an international attention. Now, this committee, Nigeria, for ratifying this particular treaty, is mandated to submit a report to this committee that they are snubbed, violated their own ultimatum with impunity. So which face would Nigeria use to challenge the Biafra government when we are here to say enough is enough with your impunity, enough is enough with your supporting of terrorism. We are not even talking about them funding terrorism, giving them all guns and arms to fight and kill indigenous people to take over their land in the name of Islamic State. We are not even talking about that yet. We are talking about only the arbitrary detention of innocent citizens so-called innocent citizen, arbitrary decision of those who were exercising their right, protected under this United Nations Treaty. That is what we are still addressing. We are not addressing their terrorism and how they are killing people, extrajudicial killings and all that. No, we are only talking about this particular detention of innocent people. How Nigeria violates this law with impunity that lead to the anarchy that you see today. Because the solution to prevent anarchy, to prevent instability, has been laid down in all these principles and treaties that we are going to assent to. And once you begin to violate it, you are opening and creating a loophole for anarchy to come in. Because people are going to resist it. When you violate people's rights, Using gun and bullet, think you can use them to suppress them for a long time. No, at a point they will fight back. And that is why I am leading the fighting back against Nigeria today. And I will stand anywhere, anytime in the world to defend how I am leading the pushback to fight against the terrorist state of Nigeria with our guns and bullets. What is the concept of this treaty? A state party to a treaty is a state that has expressed consent by an act of ratification, accession, or succession. And where the treaty has entered into force, or a state about to become a party after formal reception by the United Nations Secretary General Secretary of the state decision to be a party. A signatory to a treaty is a state that provided a preliminary endorsement of the instrument and its intent to examine the treaty domestically and consider ratifying it. No action means that a state did not express its consent. Nigeria expressed its consent in ratifying these treaties that they are now violating and Biafra is the only alternative to bring to an end to the impunity. No, so my brother, Biafra people, I want to quickly uh, inform the entire Biafra people some of the international human rights treaty under the United Nations that Biafra government will rectify through the convention in Finland on the 2nd of December. I want to inform you, we are not only declaring the restoration of Biafra on the 2nd of December, but we are also ratifying the United Nations International Human Rights Treaties and become party to these treaties to abide by these rules and regulation in order to restore peace and stability. Nigeria have not done that for decades we are going to provide that solution. So, on this note, the Biafra people will gather in the convention alongside with many observers that will be coming from all over the world to observe the convention of the Biafra government, both in the homeland and in diaspora in exile. On that day, 
Biafra will ratify the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, which was adopted in 1965. On the 2nd of December 2024, as we declare the restoration of the sovereign state of Biafra, Biafra will ratify the United Nations International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which was found in 1966. My fellow Biafrans and the good people of the world that are listening and are very, very sympathetic to the cause of Biafra people, I want you to understand that Biafra will be the beginning of civilization in Africa. We have suffered enough. Our people have been killed, and those who made it alive today should go and thank their God that they are alive to witness this particular history that we are making in this generation. On the 2nd of December 2024, that historic day, Biafra will ratify the United Nations International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. My fellow Biafrans, I want you to understand what we are doing for those who think that this is a joke. You will understand after 2nd of December. My fellow Biafrans, on 2nd of December, the Biafra government will rectify and assent to the United Nations Convention Against Torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. which came into force in 1984. On the 2nd of December, 2024, Biafra government will ascend and rectify the United Nations Convention on the Right of Child, which came into force in 1989. We are laying this foundation for those who do not understand how Biafra will restore stability in the entire region to understand that only by the rule of law that sanity will return to the region of the West Africa largest resources. On the 2nd of December, 2024, during the convention that will shape the history of Africa, the Afra government will ascend and rectify the United Nations International Convention on the Protection of Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families, which came into force in 1990. My fellow Biafrans, on the 2nd of December, we are not just only declaring the restoration of independence state of Biafra to raise a legal document, but we are also assenting as a government ratifying the United Nations International Convention for Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance. Today, Nigeria is known for enforcing the disappearance of those who criticize it, who criticize the government, those who criticize the leaders, those who criticize officials, they enforce their disappearance. Just a few days ago, we listened to one of the lawmakers bragging to a taxi driver how he can make him disappear and nobody will talk about him anymore. It happens. Thousands of people have, been disappear have disappeared as a result of them criticizing the government official. While Nigeria was party to this treaty, they encouraged and use their law enforcement agencies to violate it. Biafra is bringing alternative. How can you, you know, how can you come against the Biafra government? We are people that embrace the future and innovation. So we are going to abide by this international covenant, international law, and international treaty, making sure that it is a pathway to restore, to restore peace and stability. On the 2nd of December, 2024, 
the Biafra government will not only declare the restoration of independence of Biafra to restore peace and stability in the Sahel region, but we are also going to ascend and ratify the Convention on the Right of Person with Disability. My fellow Biafrans, on the 2nd of December, when you hear them say December 2nd will come, a lot is going to happen that day. It's going to be the, one of the most important today in the history of humankind. The Biafra government, during this convention on the 2nd of December, will ratify and assent to the United Nations optional protocol to the covenant of economic, on economic, social, and cultural rights. My fellow Biafrans, on that same day, 2nd of December, the Biafra government will also ratify and assent up to the optional protocol to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. My fellow Biafra people and the lovers of freedom across the world, we are solidifying the legal document that will form the pathway to the recognition of the Biafra as a government, as a state, and then also to bring in lasting peace to the already deteriorating security situation in the Sahel and in the region of the eastern part of Nigeria called Biafra. My fellow Biafrans, on the 2nd of December, the Biafra government will be ratifying and asserting to the United Nations second optional protocol to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. And our aim is the abolition of the death penalty. This particular convention aiming at the abolition of death penalty the Afra government will ascend and ratify this treaty. In Finland, where I live, which we have taken models from the constitution and many structure of the government, we do not have death penalty. And here, everybody is enjoying. And the government is working for the people. Crime rate is very low. My fellow Biafrans, on the 2nd of December, the Biafra government during the convention will ratify and assent to the United Nations optional protocol to the convention on the elimination of, and this, of discrimination, discrimination against women, which came into force in 1999. The Biafra government will ratify and assent to this convention and treaty. My fellow Biafran, the Biafra government, under my leadership as a prime minister, during the convention in Finland on the 2nd of December 2024, will also ratify and assent to the United Nations optional protocol to the convention on the right of the child on involvement of children in armed conflict. We will ratify this treaty and abide by it. Not like the Nigeria terrorist state are doing in the northern Nigeria. On this 2nd of December 2024, as we declare raising a document for the restoration of independence of Biafra, the Biafra government will ratify and consent to the United Nations optional protocol to the Convention on the Right of Child, on the Sales of Children, Child Prostitution, and Child Pornography. Like under Nigeria, these are not crimes. Why Nigeria assent and sign into these particular treaties, they do not even know the value. They do not know the value in the society. They do not know how it helped to shape society to become a better society like you have in Europe. 
like one of the criminals in IPOB Nigeria was surprised why Samonekpa is making all these utterances in the name of Fatim Biafra and nobody is disturbing him. But his uncle shared a nude of a child in Germany and he has been in the court for the, five, for the past five years. As a Nigerian criminal, this man does not understand that sharing any child pornography is a serious crime. And here is where that particular law derived, was derived from. Under this particular treaty, under the United Nations, the optional protocol to the Convention on the Right of the Child on the Cells of Children and Child Prostitution and Child Pornography. He didn't know is a crime because he is a product of Nigeria. So Nigeria does not respect international law. And that is the reason, that is one of the reasons that anarchy, insecurity, and all manner of atrocities in Nigeria. And they do not see most of these things as crime. So they come to Europe, they commit these crimes, and they are wondering why police is after them. We will ratify these laws teach the people what is right and wrong and make our society a sane and more saner place to live. My fellow Biafrans, on the 2nd of December, alongside other dignitaries that will embrace our convention all over the world, they will witness and observe the Biafra government assent and ratifying the United Nations optional protocol to the convention on the right of child on a communication procedure. We will also, on that 2nd of December, rectify the United Nations optional protocol on the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman and Degrading Treatment or Punishment. The Biafra government will not only do consent to all these protocols, convention, and optional protocols of the United Nations, but also we are going to ratify the United Nations optional protocol to the Convention on the Right of Persons with Disability. I want you to understand that there are many international instruments that the Biafra government will consent to and make sure we uphold this treaty, not just consenting and ratifying it like Nigeria did and other Islamic terrorist states, but we are going to make sure that we follow these particular laws because it is the only pathway to peace. Once you uphold this law, the rule of law, and abide by the treaties, it, was, it is actually shaping to restore peace, stability, tranquility, and all manner of harmony that you can enjoy as a nation. That's the difference between the Europe and Africa. And like I said, because we have come here, there is no other tribe. There is no other nation in the world that is widely traveled like the Biafra people. And not only that we are traveled, we, we are also in the government in different countries of our residence. We participate in the nation building and we have learned a lot and we want to now bring it to build our nation to make it the beginning of civilization in Africa. I want to stop here because of time. So I will be taking questions, especially from people who wish to ask questions. And uh, even though I have a limited time, but now you have at least a glimpse of the kind of things we are doing or we are going to do during the convention. It is not just about declaring the Afro restoration and all that. We, the aim of and objective of this convention is to raise this legal document that we are going to use to pursue the recognition of the Afra as a state. And this is one of the pillar of doing that is by rectifying the United Nations International Human Rights Treaties and getting ready to abide by these rules and regulation in order to restore peace and stability in our region, in our country, and in our state. Thank you very much. The media team, over to you, Rafael. I have uh, given you a co-host, so uh, success, you can continue from here. Thank you.
Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Prime Minister. And good evening, fellow Biafrans. All protocols do observe here. All ministers of the Biafran Republic government in exile and the default government in homeland, you are welcome to this very uh, press briefing by our Prime Minister. Um, making bold of our steps ahead of 2nd of December. And as you can just uh, hear from him, it is not just go to Finland and make a declaration, then raise a the document, start sending to um, a country for recognition, but also to be part of the legal um, binding force that binds other nations which made that very single singular forum called United Nations. And there are a whole lot of it, as he has named them here, which Nigeria was in hurry to become part of. They don't read the treaties, they don't read the agreements, they never read the backgrounds of what they're about to sign. They already signed it because they want to be part of the United Nations and also make part of the United Nations Security Council. And back home, they are disobeying the treaties they sign, which also form the nucleus part of their own constitutions. The centerpiece of their constitution is driven from all these rights named by our prime minister this evening, and they don't even respect their own constitutions. How do they respect uh, an international treaties, which they never read the background? So according to our prime minister, he has assured us that we shall be part of all these agreements and treaties and bring first hand civilization in uh, in africa not only uh, sahel but in the whole of africa because the, it is only us that can be able to ob obligate and make this possible so prime minister thank you very much i know the uh, second of december is going to be a whole lot of uh, power packed activities which shall appear to the world as a surprise. Thank you very much. Uh, um, Deputy Minister of Communication, uh, Maze uh, Raf Ajare. Welcome, sir, and meet yourself, please. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening, sir, good evening, my Prime Minister. Good evening, fellow Biafrans and lovers of freedom. You're all welcome to this uh, wonderful occasion of uh, being with our Prime Minister to receive the blessings of Biafra, and we can see how far we are going, and obviously we are we are very close home. We are very close home, and I give Chico Kadiam and the glory. Thank you so much, success. And um, everyone that is in this space, please, uh, uh, Prime Minister wants to engage every one of us. As you have listened to all that he has said, please, based on what he just said, uh, discussed, please bring your questions and go straight to the point. As the hands are being raised, I will respond to you accordingly. Please, as you will finish uh, your questions, you just uh, go down to listening mode so that um, the next person will be able to come up. Uh, first on this uh, space will be Triple M. Triple M, please unmute yourself. Uh, you have uh, one, at least one or two minutes to bring your questions and uh, make it. All right. Happen. All right. Thank you very much, Pastor Van 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 Thank you, my fellow girlfriends all over the world. Thank you, my invisible foreign minister. We appreciate you so much. But I won't say that it's a question. We just applaud you because you you make you renew the the quality and the pride of the Biafra in that so called in fact all over the world, not only in the zoo. But I just want I just want to ask you this uh, question. I know it's not in line with what we are discussing actually, but uh, is with regards uh, to what uh, the criminal OGJ said during the time they captured uh, our leader, they kidnapped him. So he made the statement that they had made a very big mistake. The guy in Finland is more deadly than the person they captured. Now my question is this, were you in any way uh, have something to do with uh, ODJ for him to make that statement, or he had went on that ground because he's a, he's a criminal, he's a, he's a bony man. Because sometimes you do, you do tell uh, the criminal uh, before you fight, you go to your village, kick out to your ghost or whomsoever to tell you who you are. So, my question is, do you 
in any way have something to do with your BJ before he made that statement. Thank you, my friend, Mr. Appreciate. I have nothing to do with OBJ, and I will never have anything to do with him. He knows what I know, and I know what he knows. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. How about OBJ? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Yeah. I'm on Kajampi! And by Ekenepo and Mono, a consignation and Ibo Media, boy by Sio Tedu Niabo, Ozi Joe Kempa. Master Makaya brief the Afrian Prime Minister for the Rua Kuko. Number two, the Chinketa. A key few will equal Master Makaya brief in the Nino Kuga CD teacher. A drop or a feature in Nino Kuko. A commentation na Ibo Media. And by Asinani Boyade, Nayadi Ketchi, Echada Wogo. Isa, Isa, Isa. Thank you and God bless you.